Well, hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Drydox. And uh, we're on to chapter five of this build blog for an 80 inch DeBoer Sea View. Uh, we're going to be making this full RC control with lots of cool features. Uh, like I mentioned, this is the fifth in the series of build blogs. So if you haven't checked out the other ones, be sure to go take a look, or you're going to be lost by the time we get started with this one. Let's get started. All right, if you remember where we left off last time, I was waiting on a pressure vessel to come in uh, from Amazon. And uh, what ended up happening was it came in on Friday. This is what I ended up uh, getting. Now, this is a uh, an aluminum uh, container. Um, it, I would, you'd use it for like storing matches or whatever. It's completely waterproof and sealed. Uh, but I'm going to use it as a pressure vessel for the butane gas backup system for the boat. Now, you'll notice this is not huge. It's about three and a half, four inches long with a three quarter inch uh, diameter inside. And um, that means it's not a, a you know, a massive uh, pressure vessel. But bear in mind that this is only for backup. This is only if the boat goes uh, down far enough that the induction hose and the mast can't pull air into uh, our ballast tank here. And so it'll be uh, just enough to burp some air into the ballast tank, bring it up to the surface, get that induction line cleared up, and uh, you can start sucking air to blow the ballast tank out. So this only needs to have maybe one good blow in it. That is the goal. Uh, now, what I've done is I've printed some uh, mounting bulkheads. I got a couple of these right here. They're just going to go on the ends, kind of like this sort of situation. And then I got the uh, blow solenoid is going to end up getting mounted to the end of it, just like that. And uh, and then I'm going to have a little fill port for the uh, the butane fill valve. So that's what I'm going to be working on right now, getting all of that set up. And it'll probably live just on the top of the ballast tank, probably somewhere around here uh, within easy access to all of the control wires and control box and all of that stuff. So that is what we're working on. Pressure vessel for Sea View is looking good. This is all like friction fit. Uh, with really tight tolerance, and then I've got uh, sealant around all of that. And I don't know why I'd want to, but I mean, this this would technically probably be able to be taken apart. Although I think I'm going to put some uh, adhesive around here just to seal it off permanently. But it'll look like that. Fill from here, and that's the outlet. So, simple, simple. Well, not the best results in my preliminary testing of the pressure vessel. This is what the assembly looks like, and it, it looks super cool. And obviously this hose is really long, and that's not the way that it would be, but this is just for testing purposes. This solenoid was leaking. Um, don't like it, where you went with a clippered solenoid valve, which is utilized with Propel a lot. So I'm assuming long-term this should be okay for the seals. I, I'm hoping the butane doesn't affect the internal seals of the valve. Um, if you guys have experience with that long-term, I'd certainly be interested in uh, hearing about it. But uh, I'm just getting, you know, a persistent micro leak from around the seal in here, which has a big beefy O-ring inside, um, which uh, at this operating pressure of 30 PSI should be well within the, uh, you know, realms of, of utilization. Um, but I, I just don't like it. So I actually have another pressure vessel um, on order I got it off of eBay and it's designed for laboratory experiments. I think it's rated to like 100 PSI or something like that. But the cool thing is it is actually clear. So that should be getting here hopefully later this week. But that means that uh, in the interim, uh, I'm stalled. Now, one thing I think I might do is run to the hardware store today. Ideally, we would have that clear pressure vessel, but we don't have it. Really, it's just it's like one of those want to haves don't need to have things i may just go with brass uh or copper sorry do like a, a three quarter inch or one inch copper pressure vessel which we utilize all the time for um 
RC submarines for gas backup systems. Now, I, I actually have one that's pre-made here, but it is monstrous. I got it off of a different one. This thing's huge and really heavy. Um, way, way, way overkill. The other one that I have here is uh, too tiny. It's like this big, the size of a peanut. Um, don't want it, so uh, I think I may just run to Ace across the street. Grab some copper and uh, fabricate my own. And then that way I'm not wasting three or four days waiting on stuff to end up getting here. So we'll probably do that here in the next uh, little bit and see what we can whip up in terms of a new pressure vessel. All right, I'm much happier with this. Just got back from uh, Ace and uh, grabbed some copper pipe and soldered up a brand new copper pressure vessel with the butane filler valve and a 1 8 outlet for the gas. So this is just going to whip around, go back into the tank. So when the uh, solenoid kicks off, blows into the tank and uh, gets her back up to the top. So not going to be able to drop the boat in the water today because this silicone needs to uh, kick off and uh, solidify before I want to put it in the water. So uh, hopefully tomorrow, depending on the weather, we're supposed to get like freezing weather here in Texas, which is crazy and stupid and I hate it, but it is what it is. Um, so for now, we're gonna let this thing uh, do its thing and uh, I'm gonna move on to some other stuff until it's ready. Well, here we are, it's been a long time in the making. Uh, first dunk of the 80 inch DeBoer Sea View in the water. And we chose this spot so that we can drop it in the water and if it sinks, it'll land on that little ledge as opposed to going to the bottom of the pool. Now what I'm hoping is this is gonna float when I put it in uh, right now. There's no other foam other than the ballast tank. So right now we're testing water integrity and the function of the ballast system and then we'll get to trim. So let's see what happens. was anticlimactic um, turns out can't really test the ballast system if the ballast system or the ballast tank is not uh, sealed so um, it was not leaking from my lid it wasn't me I promise um, it's the corner of the tank where it was built and that was that was that way when I got the boat so what we did is we used some of the uh, 3m sealant and uh filled that in it was a big big hole too it vented it vented that whole ballast tank in what like 20 seconds well not to mention in the process of it filling and ejecting all the air it was creating a powerful enough stream of either air or water that we were seeing like water get blasted up and over the top of the lift yeah well there's yeah there's a lot of air air pressure in there there's a lot of weight so new strategy now we have to wait for this to cure anyway. So I think what we're going to do is start looking into the application of copious amounts of foam uh, because this um, was uh, pretty darn heavy. It was hard to keep it um, up uh, when the ballast tank was full. The other thing that uh, we noticed in, uh, was that there's a little leak coming from the valve in the butane canister. So I just put a new seal on there. So that should be looked after now as well. So yeah, there's going to take a lot of foam to be able to offset the weight of the hull. And we're going to have to get really creative with where we are going to end up putting it. It's a new day here at the dry docks and uh, two projects going on. We've got uh, Sea View getting worked on and uh, Logan's taking point on the flying sub for Eric. Let's start with the sea view. 
So, uh, as I told you guys, this thing sank like a stone uh, the other day, yesterday, when we dropped it in the pool because there was a big hole in the ballast tank that we weren't aware of. Got that addressed. So, in theory, ballast tank sealed. We could drop it back in the water right now. But one thing that I did notice, uh, this thing is exceptionally heavy. So, I'm just going to take the opportunity right now to jam as much foam into this boat as I possibly physically at all can. Um, this is going to be really challenging because of this designed water line that everybody is so frantic to have this thing floating at. Um, it eliminates the utilization of said area for flotation, which means it's low, which I means I'm going to have a hunch that this is going to be an incredibly unstable boat, uh, at least in surfaced trim. So again, just to let you know, um, you know, uh, if I need to compromise that water line, I will do it in a heartbeat for a properly operational boat. Just saying. But uh, I started jamming foam in the back um, using sections. And these are actually all friction fit. Um, the only ones that are glued are actually on the bottom, which I didn't need to because the ones on top uh, are holding it all down. But these are all completely locked in place, which means... I don't know why you would, but if you ever needed access back there, it's just a matter of pulling them out and then putting them back in in the correct order. Now, I'll probably have to adhere some to the sides in here, but um, yeah, we will see how that ends up working in the very near future. All right, I'm not in a terribly awesome headspace right now because... I underestimated the sheer amount of flotation foam that it's going to take for this boat to end up floating, period, let alone floating at the correct water line. Main, okay, let's take a look at what we got going on. So the stern is now packed with foam. Well, basically from here all the way up to here is all foam block. I don't even know if that's going to be enough, to be brutally honest with you. It's a big, heavy boat. And the only flotation comes from foam. There's no cylinder providing flotation. The electronics compartment is slightly positively buoyant, but not massively so. Um, so we're going to have to see how that ends up looking. Um, I don't know if I can, you know, pack some in here. You know, another option potentially would be to inject spray foam all in here. And that would use every little nook and cranny of this area if needed. Don't want to go that route, but we will if we need to. Up front is a totally different scenario. The main issue being that we want to put that beautiful, you know, command bridge um, inside. And it takes up a huge amount of room. Uh, if you look at that, that's, uh, you know, like a foot by eight inches, basically. And uh, it's all free flooding, so it's not providing any buoyancy. And uh, it lives all up here and basically takes up this entire area through here. There is some room in the mantas, which is very low in the hull. And there is some in the nose, which is very low in the hull. So we can get buoyancy, but no stability. I really think what's going to happen, I'm going to get foam in here. I'm going to throw it in the water and it's going to flip over and float on his back. Like it's doing the backstroke. I really think that's what's going to end up happening. Um, don't like it. So I am highly of the thought that we're going to need to do away with this and make a removable foam section that can go in behind the bridge um, in this area here uh, because this is obviously a pretty tremendous amount of flotation. So if we can utilize that in here, I think we'll be okay. So I think what it may just do is, is create a foam block to this shape and then uh, it'll just be interchangeable. Uh, we'll just throw it in there. We can use the same hold down and that foam will be high. So it will provide static stability for the boat. Um, you know, in terms of those mantas and stuff, 
may cut slivers of foam and jam it all in there and cut some blocks for the nose as well. But um, that's really disappointing. I guess what we're going to end up having to do is fabricate a, a back wall like they had in the show back here with, uh, you know, that little, that little bulkhead door in the middle, blast doors or, or whatever, uh, simply for cosmetics and make that removable somehow so that uh, if this ever gets displayed, you could open it up to the, the back area there. But this is a challenging build. Uh, I am not going to lie. This is far, far, far beyond the scope of any beginner RC Submariner. Um, the primary reason being this decision to go with this style of ballast tank. Um, it's, it makes things challenging. And again, all because of the compromise of trying to go for that uh, surfaced waterline. I greatly uh, regret the decision of not just gutting this and going with the cylinder style at this point. I can still make it work. I'm going to make it work. But it's going to be a lot more work than it would be to simply have fabricated a watertight cylinder because then we would have had buoyancy sections uh, fore and aft that would have uh, provided a lot of buoyancy in here. But at any rate, um, that's where we're at right now. So I'm going to jam foam and I think I will do some spray foam um, up in the front. Uh, maybe not. I'll use foam block. Spray foam <laughs> is fine so long as you don't compromise the outer shell after it cures. But if you do compromise that, it'll take on water just like a sponge. So we are going to steer clear of that. I'm going to jam some foam in there and realistically you should be able to drop this in the water this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. All right, so let's take a look at the foam situation in the bow of the boat. Um, this is from the bottom, obviously. Uh, we got foam jammed all the way up in here. These are all friction fit. They can be removed at any time. Same thing with these that are actually going to also help hold the bridge module control room, sorry, control room uh, in place there. And then this is the bottom of the gigantic block. Let's uh, flip this thing over and I'll show you how that works. And uh, this is obviously completely removable. And to do that, you just take the stud off, take the clip off, and uh, you do some fancy wiggling here. I won't see if I can do this one-handed. It's a little tricky. Oh yeah, there you go. This comes right out. So this is all flotation. Um, so not only did we remove a considerable amount of weight, uh, from the rear bridge module control room, uh, uh, but we added in its place a whole bunch of flotation. So I am feeling better that this may work this afternoon, uh, because there's no glue to dry or anything like that. We're going to put this back in the water and see if it's gonna float. So we got it in the water and uh, it is floating at darn near perfect, the correct water line right now. I can hear air coming out though. That corner is still leaking. Still? Still leaking, yep. Right on the inside from both sides. So I just kicked on the air pump. And it's not going to be able to keep up with that leak. It's in that same corner in there, so we're going to have to... You see if I push it down, you see that? That's a big leak. Boy, I thought for sure we got it. Well, you know what, I'll turn this off and we will dive the boat. Now, there's not a lot of stability in here at all. The ballast tank is almost completely empty. Opened up the, 
There's our vents. Okay. So, man, we might have too much flotation up front. <laughs> Which is a good thing. I could pull it from the, the lower part of the hull and um, it would increase the stability that way. But it definitely needs more flotation in the stern, which is gonna be fun. Because there's just no access back there. We might need to do spray foam to just get more. So I don't think it'll actually be a lot of foam that we need to put in the back, but it will definitely be a not inconsiderable amount. The big thing is, is the stability of the boat. Like you can see it's listing right now. And you know, the more air we get in it, the, the more stable it seems to be becoming. So what I need to do is remove some of the foam from the front there. So actually we need to remove foam. Um, go ahead and, and let's grab the, uh, the top. That thing is floating. We can actually, I think the stern can come down a little bit. So we could actually add weight in the stern and flotation above the surface water line. I'm gonna be crazy. I'm trying to drive it around. I just wanna see what it'll do. I'm gonna keep the pump on to, to try and keep the... The leak from those knocking us under. To keep the ballast from flooding. That thing is floating so high. I just need to make sure it doesn't look like a log anymore. No, I do I have no problem. Oh, because I switched it. Ah. Well, I've got no rudders. I didn't hook the rudders up. Oh. I can run over to the other side and turn around. Oh, baby. This thing is going to haul ass. Definitely throw someone for a loop when the... How long is this thing? Look at that reverse. That's a, like a quarter throttle reverse. All right, I'm going to goose it. I just want to see... Because the water's being pulled from underneath, it's not, it's not uh, conducive to... <laughs> Scared the heck out of Gracie in the distance. Well, I am pretty excited. We can add more weight in the stern, low. That'll help pull it upright. And then flotation above the water line. And remove in the front. But look how much that thing's out of the water. Of course, it's listing to starboard right now, but... I mean, it's still, like, only 25% in the water. It's working. <laughs> that is awesome. And, and actually, it would turn better, but right now it's, it's listing to starboard, and the, it's the left thruster that's... Um, Air. Our 
front spotlight popped out. I'm just going to rest it up against the front here and I'm just going to goose it and see. Kind of a wake it makes. <laughs> That's cool. So uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that things are turning out right now. We've actually got this trimmed out just about perfectly, both surfaced and submerged. In the, in the back, the water comes up to about like here. So these gigantic Cadillac fins are right out of the water. And then up front, um, it's coming to about here, which is pretty good. I'm okay with this. The challenge is, uh, it is grossly unstable when it is uh, surfaced. It's not bad when it's submerged, but it's not good. So that means the only territory that we have to play with is what is below the surface waterline, which in this case uh, is a very, very small piece of the hull, less than about half. Um, and because of the way that this ballast tank was designed, and again, bear in mind, I did not do this. This was in place when I got it. There is no annular space to work with. Typically in a cylinder situation, you would have, um, an annular space, a, a gap around the ballast tank or cylinder, um, to put foam, to put weight, um, that t all the way from here to here is can't touch won't work because um we we if we go above the surface water line we're in submerged trim and uh we can't have any we don't have any room below at all so that sucks that that leaves this little area in the front where we've got control boxes and batteries and uh foam and the the command center and then in the in the back this is all flotation foam uh back here as well and that's of course where our, our motors and servos are so here's the the plan here there's a few little tiny pockets that we could put foam you know little tiny blocks here and then we could weigh it out and attach weights that would offset that and there's another little pocket you know, like here and here that we could do that with, but the amount of weight and foam that we'd be able to put in the boat would not be significant. I really want this boat to be stable. Um, and unfortunately that's just not enough. So there is gonna be a compromise. It's gonna drop the surface water line by about mm, a quarter of an inch or, or a third of it, a third of an inch. Um, and what I'm thinking we're gonna do is add a foam plate basically from here all the way back here flush with the top of the ballast tank and then we'll add weight uh, in the front and the and the back to offset that additional flotation uh, and then that is as high as we're gonna be able to get with a foam and it'll be as low as we can possibly get with the weight that's the only way we're gonna create a writing moment that's going to keep this boat stable in surfaced and submerged trim. So that's the plan right now. Um, we're gonna cut some uh, foam sheet, try and make it look nice, probably stick it down with um, Velcro maybe, uh, something like that. And uh, it'll be back in the uh, pool hopefully tomorrow. That'll be cool. We're almost at the end of the day here. Got some things to dry out. Um, Got to fix that hole in the front of the ballast tank. But uh, all in all, pretty darn good day at the office. It's Friday here at the Dry Docks. Uh, end of the weekend. I've got some high hopes that we're going to have some really positive 
results from the modifications that we did to the buoyancy for the sea view. Let's talk about that right now. So the big thing that you can see, we I tidied up this piece. It's a little bit more uh, clean. Um, and then what we did is we added a big sheet of foam to the top of the case. So this is gonna add just under 3 8 of an inch of um, foam to the top of the tank. Now this foam only comes into play when the uh, when it engages the water, obviously. Um, so what I am hoping is that uh, with the addition of the weight to offset this, we're gonna lose about a quarter of an inch, I think, of surfaced water line, which if I had to hazard a guess, means that we're gonna be floating about halfway up the windows. If we can achieve that, I will be really, really, really happy. Um, what I needed to do, I added two big lead strips here and a bunch of weight here. And then I did the same thing in the back here. And that's all spaced equidistantly from the center of the foam. The idea being that the buoyancy of the foam will be offset precisely by the weight of the lead. And because this is high and the weight is low, we create a writing moment about the central axis of the boat. And in theory, we should have stability when this thing is floating. Now, yesterday when we had this thing in the pool, um, it was actually okay for stability when submerged, uh, but surfaced, it was a disaster. It was falling all over left and right. Um, not a good situation. So hopefully with the addition of this uh, weight, we're gonna have uh, increased stability to the point where it will be operational. If not, I don't know, maybe more foam. We got a little bit more room we could add here, uh, a little bit here, I don't know. We'll jump that hurdle when we get to it. Um, things we need to do before we uh, go in, I need to, I'm gonna do a proper watertight integrity test of the watertight cylinder. I also replaced the electronic on off switch. For some reason, the old one would turn the model on, but it wouldn't turn the model off. It was weird, so I just put a brand new one in. All good. Other thing we need to do is uh, drill some vent holes in the upper deck um, and some drain holes for here. You can see from yesterday, we got a little bit of a, of a hot tub situation going on in the bridge up here. So <laughs> uh, not, not ideal, we'll have to drill some, uh, some drain uh, holes. And um, then we should be ready to put this thing in the water. So I'm thinking by the time the adhesive cures for the, where I secured the weights, uh, should be maybe an hour or two from now. And drop it back in the water again once things uh, warm up a little bit outside. Fingers are crossed. All right, uh, day two of trimming. In theory, we should be close. In theory. We're gonna see how close. Um, I haven't turned it on yet, but we'll be able to figure out where it's gonna float. So it's definitely got a starboard list, but It's stable, which means I guess maybe I can just move some weight from that side over to this side. Now with the lid on it, I have no idea if we fixed the ballast tank. Well, we're not hearing any nice loud blub blubs. No, and it's, and it's staying at this height too. So let's grab the radio. Heard something go. Yep. 
and you make this boat like Ed's where you turn it on, you hear like nine different commands ring out. Yeah. It is way, way... That's a lot of bubbles. Well, it's because I'm venting the tank. That would do. It is... Well. It looks more like it's sinking to the starboard than it is anything else. <laughs> That's perfect. I mean, I think we could put a couple of half ounce weights back here. Oh, the battery's really low. We gotta recharge the battery. I mean, that that is pretty. So. I'm frustrated. <laughs> I've been doing this for 24 years now, almost 25 years. And I have never had a boat as tricky to trim as this silly sea view. So we, we got all of the weight um, really good now. And what we did, we actually Velcro strapped the, these huge weights to the, to the bottom of the hull in an effort to um, increase the stability of the boat because what ends up happening in surface trim, it wants to list to starboard really quite aggressively. Um, even if we roll it all the way to the left, it'll roll back to the right. But we probably put four pounds of weight in the keel and it still does the same thing. Ballast tank is empty. The water's not moving inside the ballast tank. So I'm not sure what's going on. We have the water line at the correct point. Um, submerged trim looks really, really good. It's just that surfaced trim that is proving to be very problematic. So we're gonna leave you on a cliffhanger. The boat's untrimmed. You're gonna have to stay tuned to the next video to find out if we managed to lick this problem or not. So on behalf of myself, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with an all his dry docks and Logan. Um, we're going to let you go for now. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will catch you next time. <laughs>